what are things to consider the benefits, but also some considerations? What about that waste heat and how can you use it in Massachusetts? Yeah, so uh, anytime you're talking about combined heat and power, uh, including cogeneration, uh, engine driven chillers, or tri generation, which I'll touch on here in a second, to make that a cost effective system, you have to have very high thermal efficiency which means you're putting fuel, you're putting gas into the natural gas into the front end of this thing, you're burning gas and you're getting some useful work or energy out the back side of it. If you just use that gas to turn an engine to make, uh, or to, to, to turn an engine, to turn a generator to make electricity, you're gonna have a lot of waste heat. If you don't have something good to do with that waste heat, something useful, it's not a very efficient system. It's not very beneficial to you from an emission standpoint or from you know, an operational cost standpoint. So you have to have something to do with that waste heat really in, in, in all conditions. So one of the things you can do with that waste heat is put it through something called an absorption chiller. And this would be a tri-gen facility uh, where you're making heat, you're making power, and you're taking some of that waste heat and putting it through absorption chillers. Um, it is an end use for excess you know, waste heat. If you had nothing else to do with it, that is something you could do with it. Uh, but absorption chillers have a very low coefficient of performance. They're not efficient pieces of equipment. Uh, they don't tolerate changes in load very well. They just want like a, a, a flat base load. And they also make use of like some pretty intense chemicals that you may or may not want in your facility. There's also a much more limited uh, selection, I guess I'll say, of, of folks to uh, maintain or service those units, you know, on, on short demand. Anytime that we have looked at tri-gen projects, we have found them to be not cost effective. Um, other ways that you could look to run your facilities HVAC entirely on gas would be engine driven chillers, which Brendan talked about earlier. Uh, you can get all of your chilled water through the engine driven chiller. You get waste heat off of that system for heating, for reheating, for domestic hot water. And if you need more heat, you can supplement that with a natural gas boiler. Um, so that's going to get you to effectively, you know, 100% HVAC uh, on fuel, natural gas. Uh, you'll still need electricity for, for fans, motors, things of this nature. Um, but that would be the way that I would think you'd want to go if you're looking to do HVAC 100% on gas would be an engine driven chiller and not cogeneration with uh, an absorption chiller. We find those to be much less cost effective.